So in this video, we're going to look at a pretty challenging topic, and that is how do you calculate the pH change of a buffer when you add small amounts of acid or base? So remember, a buffer's got two things present, right? It's got a weak acid, and it's got a conjugate base. And why do we have both things present? Well, the weak acid is capable of neutralizing any bases that you add to the buffer. And the conjugate base is capable of neutralizing any weak acids that you add to the buffer. So that's why we have to have both those components present. So the acid's job is to kind of take it on the nose if any bases are added, and the conjugate base's job is to take it on the nose if any acids are added. So the other way to make a buffer, of course, is to use a weak base, such as ammonia, and its conjugate acid, such as the ammonium ion. And so exactly the same idea here. The weak base will neutralize any added acids, and the weak acid will neutralize any added bases. So that's why they always have to have each other. Now, one of the things that always worried me for a long time is if you've got a weak acid and its conjugate base, why don't they neutralize each other? And the answer to that question is they actually do. And uh, But let me show you why this isn't a problem. So if the weak acid HA reacts with its conjugate base A-, it transfers a proton to A-, minus, so converts it to HA. And of course the HA, having lost a proton now, is A-. Minus. And I wonder if you can see what the problem is, or what the solution is. Yeah, and the answer is the acid ends up turning into the base, and the base turns into the acid, so you end up with exactly the same amount of everything. So it's like the molecules, they might switch places, but the total number of each one is never changing. So although it can neutralize itself, it doesn't actually change any of the concentrations, and so the pH doesn't change. All right, so we're ready for the meat and potatoes time. So we have to calculate the pH change of a buffer when we go ahead and we add acid or base to it. So the very first thing I think is we're probably going to work with numbers of moles. And because we're adding acids or bases, and because the total volume can change, and because we've got dilutions, it's a lot easier to work with number of moles. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to do an ice chart. But instead of using concentrations, we're going to use number of moles for our initial, our change, and our equilibrium. Any added H plus or OH minus is going to go to fully neutralizing the weak acid or the conjugate base. So the H plus that we add is going to neutralize A minus. The OH minus that we have is going to neutralize HA. In fact, we can write those equations down like so. So we're going to say that any H plus we have is going to completely neutralize any A minus in the stoichiometric amount to make HA. And any OH minus we add is going to react with the HA, and it's going to form H2O, and it's going to form A minus. So that's the very first thing we're going to do. And we are assuming 100% conversions of these reactions. If you calculate their equilibrium constants, what you'll find is that they're extremely large. And so we can essentially assume that any added H plus completely goes to consuming A minus, and any added OH minus goes to completely consuming HA. And that, of course, is going to change the number of moles of everything. And at the end of the day, after we've done the ice chart, um, we're going to go ahead and use the Handelson Hasselbalch equation to calculate the final pH. So that's our overall plan. So uh, we'll go ahead and go to another video and we'll try and put this all together. Stay tuned.